Sure. So hi, everyone. Welcome to our InShip lecture today, and thank you so much for your patience. My name is Eileen Condon. I'm an assistant professor at the School of Nursing here at UConn, and it's really my great honor to introduce our guest speaker for today, Dr. Shannon Zank. Dr. Zank is the director of the National Institute of Nursing Research of the National Institutes of Health. She joined NINR in September 2020, following a 14-year career as a faculty member at the University of Illinois Chicago College of Nursing and Institute for Health Research and Policy. Dr. Zhang's own research focuses on community environments as a social determinant of health and health inequities. And what I think is really exciting is that she and her team conducted really pioneering research on food deserts in the United States. Dr. Zank has rece received numerous awards, and in 2019, she was inducted into the International Nurse Researcher Hall of Fame. So thank you, Dr. Zank, for joining us, and uh, you can take it away. Dr. Zank, this is Joanne at NINR. Would you like me to share your slides and would you let me know when you're prepared? I know you're still having a little bit of a technical problem there in the office. Thank you. Um, I, think, uh, I think I'm ready if you can share the slides. Okay, I will share my screen. Can you see these slides? I can't, but uh, maybe others can. I'm sorry, Dr. Zank, you said you can't see what I'm sharing? Um, no, I can't. Oh, now I can. I think my connectivity is really bad. Um, sorry. Okay, uh, so hopefully this will work. Joanne, are we ready to give it a try? I'm ready whenever you are. I'm gonna... Okay, <laughs> let's give it a try. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm so sorry for the exciting and delayed start. Uh, I had heard yesterday we're returning to the, or beginning at the federal work site and uh, I had heard yesterday there were connectivity issues. I had not experienced them, and now I have. So um, thank you for your patience. Um, so thank you for that introduct introduction. Um, throughout my career, um, I've certainly seen the benefits of interdisciplinary team science, and I know that uh, your organization is committed to fostering collaboration among disciplines. So appreciate um, all that you're doing. And um, like you, uh, nursing science also views health challenges through many different lenses, and I'm honored uh, to be with you today to share that perspective. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, I don't, oh, great. All right, so before I get started, um, I'll give you a preview of my talk, which will include a little bit about my start in nursing research, which shaped my interest in health equity. What I see, where I see NINR support in nursing science going over the next several years under our upcoming uh, strategic plan, research and nurse and uh, partnerships at NINR and NIH and our commitment to diversity and inclusion, and certainly looking forward to our Q&A, and I'll try to speed things along the best I can. Uh, next slide, please. I joined um, NIH and NINR during the first year of the pandemic, and if anything, my tenure at NINR thus far has underscored to me how essential nurses and nursing science are in the ongoing COVID-19 response effort. Um, and it was also highlighted um, over the past uh, 18 months how nursing science can improve and indeed how it must improve the health for all Americans. For NINR as an institution and for me as a researcher, this means striving for greater health equity. 
Health equity, uh, though, is a term that means different things to different people, so I'd like to take a moment to define it. And uh, one definition that I like is the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's all-encompassing definition. So here it is. Health equity means that everyone has a fair and just opportunity to be as healthy as possible. This requires removing obstacles to health, such as poverty, discrimination, and their consequences, including powerlessness and lack of access to good jobs with fair pay, quality education and housing, safe environments, and health care. My enduring interest in health equity began at the very start of my nursing career with the kinds of experiences that inspired me to consider the obstacles that so many people face to optimizing their health. And perhaps like some of you uh, from the College of Nursing, uh, one of my first jobs in nursing was as a home health care case manager. Uh, in that role, I visited people in their homes and um, in their different communities typically after hospitalization. And it was in spending time in those homes and in different communities that uh, the tremendous differences um, between the environments of patients in my caseload became very evident. And it was difficult to talk to some patients about healthy eating, for example, when what they really needed to restore their health was far more fundamental decent and stable housing, a safe environment, and access to affordable, healthy foods nearby. This led um, to ultimately what my research, a program of research has been, um, really understanding how resources and risks are unevenly distributed across communities and the implications for people's health and health inequities. Next slide, please. Um, my own research has focused primarily on food environment inequities. Um, we've conducted research on food deserts, but we know um, from research uh, replicated across the country and in many countries around the world that it's not just food resources, but a wide variety of other resources um, that are unequally distributed. Jobs that pay a living wage, good schools, municipal services such as public transit, pharmacies, attractive green spaces and parks, destinations and infrastructure for walking and biking, as well as clean air and water. Next slide. But research has also shown it's not just risks, but it's um, resources, it's also risks. Low income communities of color are disproportionately subjected to a number of risks, such as greater availability and marketing of tobacco, alcohol and junk food, excessive monitoring by police and immigration officials, pollution and toxic substances. Next slide. And because of research like this, the public and policymakers now understand that there are communities that through no fault of their own, lack the resources needed to live their healthiest lives. And we know that historic and ongoing racial inequities are obstacles to health. The question then is how can we bring about the changes that these communities need? And how can nursing science be a catalyst for this much needed change? It's a question that is at the heart of the evolving nursing priorities for research at NINR. And the question requires, the answer requires an all hands on deck approach given the breadth of the problem. As I've seen um, in my own experiences and research, it will take great determination if we're to do more than just put a Band-Aid on health disparities and health inequities. It is these avenues of research, these probing questions about how nursing science can help whole populations of people that led me to NINR. Next slide, please. Since coming to NINR, um, I've been working to set up my lab at the National Institute on Minority Health and Health Disparities. I know that even our nation's capital struggles with persistent health disparities, something I'm sure many of you have seen um, in your work as well. And I'm hopeful that our research uh, through our lab will serve the many underserved communities in NIH's backyard. Our focus will remain on how community environments affect health behaviors and outcomes in African Americans, but we're also in the process of developing a new line of research um, on climate change, investigating multi-level determinants of and disparities in individually experienced temper 
individually experienced temperature uh, and the implications for people's health. Uh, and I am fortunate to be working with three talented fellows um, shown on this slide, and we're looking to add a staff scientist to our team. So if you know anyone, uh, send them our way. Next slide, please. So now um, I'll uh, discuss how I'm bringing my nursing science and health equity perspectives and those of many other investigators to NINR. I first learned of the director position while I was engaged in research uh, at the University of Illinois Chicago, but I was intrigued um, by the idea of leading on a larger scale. I recognize this as a once in a lifetime opportunity to apply my experiences both as a nurse as well as a researcher and to have a greater impact on practice and policy. Um, my view at the time, to quote Lin-Manuel Miranda's Hamilton, which I love and am inspired by, was that I am not throwing away my shot. My shot, as I saw it, was to advance the science on health equity from a more strategic position. And now, as the director, I am honored to lead an organization with the goal of improving millions of lives. As you can see here, the Institute is committed to solving pressing health challenges and informing practice and policy to optimize health and advance health equity. A big part of this mission will involve addressing the social determinants of health. And I believe that now is the time to act. Structural and social factors have long influenced health, but the COVID pandemic made their impact exceedingly clear. Throughout the pandemic, we saw that people of color were more vulnerable to COVID's impact on health, well-being, and finances. And very alarmingly, we saw that disparities in life expectancy grew larger for people of color. We know that even before COVID, structural and social factors have been drivers of persistent disparities in rates of chronic disease, maternal and infant mortality, vaccination adherence, injury and exposure to violence, and so much more. These disparities will outlast COVID, but it's our responsibility and our duty as health professionals to do everything we can to solve the upstream problems that perpetuate inequities. Next slide. Now, an understanding of these disparities and the structural policies and practices that sustain them has informed our research portfolio at NINR. Most of NINR's work uh, directly involves people. In fact, over 75% of our funding supports research that directly engages human participants or clinical research. We're at the cutting edge of research to mitigate disparities in health outcomes. At present, over 30% of our funding already goes to research to eliminate health disparities. Very importantly, we're committed to funding underrepresented minority scientists. According to data from a recent NIH study, over 75% of the applications submitted to NINR focus on topics on which black investigators disproportionately apply. And that's the second highest uh, percentage at NIH. Next slide. About a third of our budget supports behavioral and social sciences research. This is the highest share among all NIH institutes and centers. And about a quarter of our budget is already dedicated to social determinants of health research. More than a third of our budget is focused on preventing chronic conditions, helping people stay healthy, and reducing the risk of future illness. And over half of those prevention projects include a randomized intervention, a much higher percentage, again, than at NIH as a whole, which is at about 17%. And we're focused on preparing the next generation of nurse scientists. As a percentage of budget, NINR commits more support to training new and early career scientists than nearly any other NIH institute or center. These strengths provide a foundation on which we're building our new strategic plan. So let me tell you a little bit about how we're doing that. Next slide, please. So to lay the groundwork for our strategic plan, we spent more than a year developing a new framework to guide our research. As we conceptualized the plan, we actively engaged many stakeholders. 
We convened a working group with 20 external experts that provided recommendations through our National Advisory Council for Nursing Research. We reviewed 385 online responses to our Tell Us What Nursing Research Means to You campaign. We reviewed more than 100 emails in response to an open call for input on the development of the strategic plan. I personally participated in my first year in 80 meetings and presentations with external groups. And we reviewed over 130 public comments from our request for information on the draft strategic plan research framework. In developing the plan, we embrace the many respondents who have asked that we support research on health disparities. As a result, our plan explicitly supports research topics that explore the intersection of healthcare and public health through the lenses of social determinants of health, health equity, and community health. So I'm excited to share a little bit more about this bold new strategic plan that will guide uh, nursing research at NINR. Next slide, please. The plan uh, will include um, two main parts, uh, guiding principles and research lenses. A set of guiding principles that we believe uh, should drive all areas of NINR supported science, and then five research lenses that describe broad perspectives by which to examine health challenges. Next slide. So first, I'll describe our guiding principles and what they mean for researchers. NINR's guiding principles describe important qualities uh, that all NINR supported work should have going forward. In considering awards for funding, the extent to which the studies reflect the principles um, shown on this slide will be a factor in our decision. So we need research that's innovative, applies rigorous research methods, has the potential for significant impact on health and wellness well beyond the study sample, advances equity, diversity, and inclusion, addresses today's challenges, and helps us be better prepared for the future, and provides solutions to optimize health across clinical, community, and policy settings. Next slide, please. So let me tell you a little bit about what we mean by a research lens. As we know, the field of nursing science is comprised of many different perspectives on what topics nursing science should address and how we should do so. Simply put, when we say a lens, we're describing a perspective by, through which to examine an identified health challenge. In developing the strategic plan, NINR identified five lenses that we think best leverage the strengths of nursing science to innovate, think bigger, and greatly increase our impact. So let's take a closer look at each of these lenses. Next slide. Health equity includes studies aimed at producing evidence needed to reduce and ultimately eliminate the systemic and structural inequities that place some population groups at a disadvantage in attaining their full health potential. Okay, next slide. Social determinants of health include the conditions in which people are born, live, learn, work, play, and age. Because these determinants we know impact so many facets of our health and well being, we believe it's vital to support research that will examine them and identify effective approaches to address social factors, positive and negative, and social needs to improve health outcomes. Next slide. Population and community health include studies that address critical health challenges at a macro level by focusing on interventions that affect groups of people with shared characteristics and who live within a shared area. Next slide. Prevention and health promotion includes projects studying how to prevent disease and promote health through the continuum of prevention, from primordial prevention that targets the underlying factors that increase risk of illness to tertiary prevention that aims to reduce disease severity, symptoms, and progression. Next slide. And finally, systems and models of care. Uh, that includes research to address clinical, organizational, and policy challenges through the development, dissemination, and implementation of new systems and models of care, including those that bridge clinical and community care with social factors and social needs. Next slide. 
So here's what you can expect over the next few months. The strategic plan will be finalized soon and published on our website. We'll begin the hard work of implementing the new plan and the research we fund and conduct and in the way we manage our institute. We're also considering hosting webinars and other events that will highlight important research in these new areas of emphasis. The bottom line is to keep monitoring our website, our Twitter feed, and our news feed for the very latest. Next slide, please. So though our strategic plan is not yet final, we're already supporting health equity research. So let me share some of the funding opportunities that we're leading or supporting to advance science, which we believe is essential to ensure that everyone has a chance to attain their full health potential. Next slide, please. As you might expect, um, some of these funding opportunities address the ongoing COVID pandemic. For example, NINR is one of 11 institute centers and offices to sign on to a notice of special interest or NOSI highlighting the need for research to address vaccine hesitancy among populations that experience health disparities. They're not limited to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We know that vaccine hesitancy is an ongoing issue in fighting the pandemic. With this notice, we hope to examine community-engaged interventions, evaluate policies and initiatives that mitigate or exacerbate disparities in vaccine access, intake, uptake, and series completion, and understand and address barriers to increasing reach, access, and uptake of vaccinations. This funding opportunity opened in December, but there's plenty of time. Uh, we're accepting applications until next January, 23. Additionally, uh, NINR and uh, other NIH Institute centers and offices are participating in an initiative on social, behavioral, and economic impacts of COVID-19 in vulnerable and health disparity populations. One study that NINR has already supported through this mechanism is examining whether an intervention in South Carolina for both African-American COVID-19 survivors with underlying chronic diseases and their informal caregivers is effective in improving health and quality of life for both partners in the dyad. The intervention will focus on overcoming racial and pandemic related stressors in the context of community social vulnerability. As always, you can find more information on the NIH and NINR uh, websites. Next slide. Of course, we continue to support health equity research outside of COVID as well. For example, we've signed on to a funding announcement to support innovative, collaborative, and multidisciplinary research to study the effective adaptation, integration, and implementation of recommended guidelines of care for persons with multiple chronic conditions from populations that experience health disparities. Um, so hopefully, uh, many of you can see how your work might fit. Next slide. Another opportunity, we've signed on to um, a funding announcement to develop and test at the community or community organization level, uh, interventions that seek to prevent firearm and related violence, injury, and mortality. Though violence we know affects people of all ages, and its impacts are far reaching, it constitutes a major public health crisis among young people, and in particular among racial ethnic minority, sexual and gender minority, and disability populations. For instance, firearm homicide is the third leading cause of death among persons aged 10 to 24 years, and the leading cause of death among black men. For those of you who are interested, uh, the NIH Office of Behavioral and Social Sciences Research recently had a webinar, Technical Assistance, so you can find more information again on the website as well as that webinar. Next slide, please. Here are uh, some other examples of funding opportunity announcement that we're participating in and supporting uh, related to health equity and minority health. These opportunities um, have focused on topics such as maternal health outcomes among women who experience persistent disparities, 
the impact of pandemic-related food and housing programs on health outcomes in disparity populations, the effectiveness of school-based health centers to address the needs of underserved youth, improving Native American health, and advancing health equity in pain. Um, again, um, more information is on our websites. Um, for any of the opportunities I've mentioned, um, feel free to reach out to program staff uh, with any questions. Remember too that um, we welcome investigator initiated applications um, related to health equity and any of the other um, priorities um, that uh, the, the Institute supports. Next slide, please. So in support of our guiding principles for research, particularly related to advancing equity, diversity, and inclusion, we're making sure that NINR is at the table and leading efforts to collaborate with partners both within NIH and across the federal government. Next slide, please. For instance, um, I am excited uh, that NINR is helping to lead two Common Fund programs to advance health equity. As background, Common Fund programs address emerging scientific opportunities and pressing challenges in biomedical research that no single NIH institute or center can address on its own, but that are of high priority to NIH as a whole. The Common Fund is a unique resource at NIH where high-risk, innovative endeavors with the potential for extraordinary impact are supported. Launched in 2021, the first was the transformative research to address health disparities and advance health equity common fund program. This program uh, is supporting innovative translational research projects to prevent, reduce, or eliminate health disparities and advance health equity. Uh, already, uh, two funding opportunity announcements that were released in 2021 um, are already supporting uh, $58 million in research over the next five years. Next slide, please. Um, but one of those opportunities uh, has been reissued. So I wanna point out that the RFA for minority serving institutions uh, was reissued and the due date is coming up in May on May 23rd. So there's another chance um, for those at minority serving institutions to apply. Next slide, please. So recognizing though, the urgency of health equity research, NINR along with our colleagues um, from several NIH institutes and offices are co-chairing a second new 10-year, $397 million common fund program called COMPASS. COMPASS will be transformative and help us to make real progress in eliminating health inequities and achieving health equity by looking upstream at the systems and structures that are causing socially and economically disadvantaged populations to become sick in the first place. The program has two overarching goals. First, the program will facilitate and implement a cross-IC framework for health equity intervention research. Second, it will deploy and evaluate community-driven structural health equity interventions that leverage intersectoral partnerships. I am excited to have NINR's involvement and leadership in this initiative, and um, I am very excited uh, as we move forward over the next 10 years uh, to advance this area of science through a nursing perspective. All right, next slide. Thank you. Um, another initiative that NINR is helping to lead is related to climate change. Um, this is a new trans-NIH climate change and health initiative. The initiative will support research to understand the potential health benefits of actions to prevent, mitigate, and adapt to climate change, especially for at-risk communities. So um, keep an eye out for more opportunities in this area. Thank you. At NINR, we acknowledge, though, that our efforts towards achieving health equity depend, at least in part, on our efforts towards diversity. Quite simply, greater diversity and inclusion in our science greatly enhances the quality and impact of the research we support. Next slide. 
At NINR, we're addressing the issue of diversity in the nursing science workforce by participating in two important NIH initiatives to help build diversity among early career scientists. One is the first initiative, and the second, the Mosaic Postdoctoral Career Transition Award to promote diversity. So through the first program, NIH aims to facilitate institutions in building a self-reinforcing community of scientists through recruitment of a critical mass of early career faculty with a demonstrated commitment to inclusive excellence. Mosaic, uh, the second one, aims to support a cohort of early career independent investigators from diverse backgrounds with a long-term goal of enhancing diversity in the biomedical research workforce. We also support pre-doctoral fellowships to promote diversity. Next slide, please. We also encourage all investigators with an eligible grant, such as an R01, to submit a diversity supplement and help ensure our work is inclusive of everyone. Diversity supplements have been shown to launch successful and productive careers uh, for scientists of diverse backgrounds. NINR supports diversity supplements to enhance the diversity of not only the research workforce, but also the entrepreneurial workforce by recruiting and supporting students, postdoctoral fellows, and eligible investigators from diverse backgrounds. This uh, includes those from groups underrepresented in health-related research or in the small business SBIR, STTR programs. Next slide. Part uh, of increasing diversity among NINR-supported scientists includes ensuring opportunities are available to scientists and students at a range of institutions. As such, we're participating in the NIH Research Enhancement Award Program, or REAP, which is designed to stimulate basic and clinical research at educational institutions that provide baccalaureate or advanced degrees for a significant number of our nation's research scientists, but have not been major recipients of NIH support. It's also hoped that this program will expose students in such environments to meritorious research. Eligible institutions must award NIH relevant baccalaureate or advanced degrees in health professions and have received less than $6 million per year of NIH support in the majority of the last seven years. So um, please share with your networks and um, I encourage everyone who's eligible to apply. Next slide, please. We are eager to learn what more we can do to significantly strengthen diversity and inclusion. Towards that end, the NINR Advisory Council impaneled two working groups that are addressing diversity and inclusion in our research workforce and in the science we support. Um, these groups are at work, hard at work, and we're looking forward to hearing from them and learning from them over the next um, number of months. Next slide, please. So before I close, um, I'd like to share a few additional thoughts on the importance of nursing science to health and well being. As you all know, nurses are everywhere, in our hospitals and clinics, in our schools and workplaces, in homes and justice settings, and throughout our communities. We approach prevention, treatment, and care holistically and in context. And the scope of our practice and our discipline extends from improving the health of individuals to that of entire populations. What sets NINR apart from other NIH institutes is that our research is focused on health solutions for people in the context of their lives and living conditions. It's our unique perspective that makes our scientific discipline so well positioned to lead research focused on the whole picture of health, from the biology of a person's cells and genes to their whole self, their family and resources, and the community and society in which they live. Next slide. So I wanna thank you for recognizing the importance of nursing and nursing sciences perspective in biomedical research. Thank you again for inviting me to share um, this perspective with you today. I look forward to hearing now about your interests and to answering your questions. Please note the email address on this slide. 
If there's anything we don't get to discuss today, any program you want more information on, um, please feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll get you the information you need. Um, so with that quick talk uh, to save time for uh, questions and comments, um, I'll stop there. So thanks again. Thank you so much, Dr. Zank. That was really, really great. It's, yes, let's do a virtual <laughs> round of applause. Um, it's really exciting to hear the, the direction that NINR is taking and especially um, the role of NINR uh, and being a leader in the health equity space, I think is, is really exciting. Um, I will kick things off with a question that I have, and then I will monitor the chat and anyone is welcome to raise their hands um, or unmute yourselves and I'll, I'll do my best to try to keep us organized. Um, <clears throat> So, Dr. Zenk, you mentioned at the beginning of your talk that you are, um, you know, have a, that you have a lot of experience working with interdisciplinary teams, and as you know, this group in Chip is was really focused on interdisciplinary collaborations. I'm wondering um, if you have any advice, especially for those of us like myself who are early career and trying to build these teams um, in order to address um, issues around health inequity. Um, do you have any kind of pearls or words of wisdom? Wisdom um, from your own experiences. Yeah, thank you. Well, I team science is one of my passions. We know um, that science conducted from a team perspective um, is uh, more impactful in a variety of ways. Um, so I encourage you um, to think about. Uh, who needs to be at the table to ask the most important, significant, innovative questions uh, conducted in the best way and better prepare you to make a difference um, uh, with your research in terms of practice and policy from our standpoint. Um, I think there's so many things we could talk about. Um, for me, um, I think one thing to know is it's not easy. Team science, it um, involves being aware of your own strengths and limitations, being willing uh, to give up power and control and share that with others. Um, and um, it involves doing things differently, taking more time, because collaboration in general does take more time. So, uh, but I think the benefits, while hard, far outweigh um, you know, the things that are challenging. And so um, I encourage you uh, to continue conversations across disciplines. That's where the real scientific discoveries will come. We know no discipline has all the answers, but I encourage all of you here today uh, to consider nurses and nursing scientists as part of your teams. We have this broad perspective from the biological to the societal, which I think can benefit a wide variety of research topics and um, uh, efforts. So thank you for your question. Uh, I, there looks like there's a question from Marco. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me okay? Yes? I can. Okay, great. So um, first of all, I want to applaud you on your presentation um, because I think it's well overdue that uh, folks recognize the role of uh, nursing. Obviously, the pandemic has certainly placed the, uh, the need and recognition of the nurse, but also how they can be perceived um, now as a, as a public health professional. Often, nurses are associated with you know, healthcare institutions where they're really concentrating on individual health, but as a health director for a local public health agency in Connecticut, I employ public health nurses, and I can assure you that they uh, are a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, reason why we are making great strides in addressing some of the health inequities and certainly targeting those populations that are that are of need. And um, we've been doing this well prior to the pandemic, but I think folks have recognized that. So for example, we have school nurses that work uh, for the public health agency, and we're looking to change their title from school nurse to public health nurses that work in a school because they're really targeting a smaller population, i.e. the school population, but that's certainly um, much more uh, of a 
of a public health uh, responsibility than one may think. So I was listening to your presentation and I'm saying to myself, boy, I wish, uh, you know, I can put this on the job description of our uh, public health nurses because truly they do so much more. And uh, I, I recognize what they do, but I think we need to do a better job in, in uh, sharing that with the public. So great job, uh, good luck with um, your endeavors, but I just wanted to share how uh, this was a, uh, you know, had a true meeting um, with regards to my staff here at the health district. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, it's so important. I think yeah, you're right. I mean, nurses have long been in the community um, and uh, bridging clinical settings and community settings. And the more and more meetings I go to, interagency meetings um, within the Department of Health and Human Services, the need to bridge clinical care and community care, um, the healthcare sector with the public health sector is more and more recognized. Um, as essential if we're really going to make a dent in improving uh, the health of individuals, families, and communities, and uh, improving um, health for everyone. So um, I think there's lots of scientific questions and opportunities in that space, and, and so I really appreciate your comments and what you're doing, so thank you. Dr. Kong. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zhang, to uh, come to UConn, give us this wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I know like um, our, our faculty really interested about the uh, uh, the community health and uh, the diverse uh, to improve health equity. So could you please share uh, some experience for how to build up the relationship with the community, especially the marginalized uh, community is so important. I know you're an expert on that. Could you please share some strategy how to build up the further relationship for research and uh, also practice actually? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's a, a great question. And I know so many, uh, I recognize names on this call as having expertise in this area as well. Um, I think uh, to make sure that we're addressing um, the most pressing health needs that our nation faces, it's really essential to be talking to uh, the pe people uh, who are experiencing the disparities and who know uh, what the potential solutions are. And so I think community partnerships are so important as we move forward, if we're really uh, to make uh, significant changes in the health of our nation. Um, I think uh, one thing that's clear, uh, we did listening sessions in uh, the fall for to inform the common fund programs that were moving forward. and. Um, those were really enlightening and, and the challenges of research tourism, uh, people coming in and out of communities without a commitment to sustainability, without um, knowledge and familiarity with the community and partnership is a big concern. Uh, so I think um, it really, uh, ways we can enhance those partnerships is um, being there listening, taking the time to build those relationships um, before we engage in research, to understand what the community needs and uh, what approaches they think will be effective. And so I think there's so much that we can be doing, um, but also we have to pay attention to um, being present after the money leaves. Uh, you know, the grant ends um, and then, you know, there's too often people leave and then they come back uh, when they, you know, want something else. And so staying, uh, keeping engaged, um, regardless of the life cycle of grants, I think is uh, where we need to continue to move. Some people are very good at that. Um, but it's, it, you know, the community notices, um, rightly so, and um, it's not going to be an acceptable practice as we move forward. And I think, you know, similarly, funders will be paying attention to that as well. And I think on our side, right, funders, we need to think more creatively um, about how to support the formation of partnerships, how to um, 
potentially look at our role in terms of sustaining partnerships between projects. And so I know a lot of those conversations are happening at NIH. And so again, we, um, with this topic, as well as any other, we welcome your ideas about what would be helpful to support the development, um, maintenance and sustainability of community partnerships. And so feel free to reach out to us with ideas that you have, or if you wanna share some now, I'm, I'm all ears. Thank you so much. It's really great. Yeah, a lot of information there. Thank you. I think we have time for about one more quick question if anyone has anything else. Just to thank well, you for not, sharing I, this I vision. I want to thank you. Yeah, I want oh, to Oh, yeah, you. my pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's great. And um, yeah, I do want to well. say, I, I, I am so sorry about the beginning. <laughs> Those uh, challenges uh, don't have a lot of control over here. So thank you. No, no worries. We're glad you could join us today. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Once Thanks, again. Dr. Zhang.